Today I'm going to talk about um, Variations, Opus 41 by Nikolai Kapustin. Um, today's lecture centers a lot on timbre and orchestration, or specifically big band, uh, that he had in his mind when he wrote this piece. Um, or he, he didn't actually mention that he had that in mind, but one can easily make a guess to as to which um, instrument he had in his mind when he wrote certain part of the music. I will start by mentioning a little bit of the history about this piece. Um, Kapustin is a Ukrainian-born pianist and who went to Russia and went to Moscow Conservatory <coughs> and studied uh, classical music, but he was also deeply involved with jazz music and he conducted, was part of big band, um, and he was a pianist, he played a lot of tunes, and he also played his original compositions. So his um, involvement with jazz is more big band than, for example, vocal jazz, or um, jazz combo even, it's, it's very big band-like. He even has a piece called Sound of Big Band that is just piano solo. That one is more obvious which one he was going for. Historically, jazz was prohibited in Soviet Union when Stalin was ar uh, around. Only after Stalin's death, jazz became vibrant and Russian people were able to enjoy the sound of jazz and started to play saxophone. Um, and because saxophones was even banned because of the association with jazz, which was the associated with America. Um, so his composition influences come from especially bebop. Um, Charlie Parker is famous for just making bebop, bebop. And one of his variation at the end is a very typical type of bebop. So I'm going to introduce and talk about that very soon. Um, so he wrote mostly just piano pieces, piano solos, piano with big band, piano concertos, or piano with other instruments because he himself was a pianist and he liked to play and improvise and come up with his own way of his language on the piano and put that into music. But in his music, you can find a similar complexity you find in, for example, Prokofiev or Stravinsky with the structure you, you see in classical music. So his music is a fusion of jazz the uh, modern complexity and very classical structure. So he uses sonata allegro form a lot. Um, he titles most of his pieces sonata, etude, this is variation. So he uses form and name of um, classical music. And for classical musicians, pianists, it is a dream come true to be able to play something truly jazz and technically demanding so you can perform and all people and you don't have to improvise so all his stuff is all pre-written you just learn to play all the notes but here is some mistakes that some people classically trained people make um, of um, not understanding jazz style as much and I'm hoping in this lecture I can show a, a few techniques and tips that I learned from other jazz musicians, how to make it sound jazzy. Now, first thing is that this Kapustin uh, variation, um, Opus 41, Kapustin himself has a recording of it. So my teacher suggested me to just listen, 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 listen over and over, and just copy exactly what he does. <laughs> and I did exactly that. But it just ended up sounding like lesser version of himself playing, because I was missing the link of him imitating the sound of big band. So if I want to imitate him, I need to go back to the root of where he got his idea. So I then started to listen to all the big band charts that were very um, iconic and I got some ideas, of course with the help of my husband who used to be a jazz singer and a saxophone player in a big band. Now going to the piece itself, Opus 41, I want to talk about the theme. I'll play the theme and get, see if you can guess what the theme is from. So this, this theme is a famous theme that you hear in Rite of Spring. At the beginning by the bassoon. Um, he takes 
takes this um, theme from a folk theme that was actually the Chuganian folk song, Chu Matu Sese Relic. And he puts this theme into everywhere. Not just the beginning, he has it variations everywhere, just fragments here and there. But sometimes he has variations where he doesn't have any. So instead of talking about where you can find a theme, I wanted to go back and talk about how each part are supposed to be played and what kind of instrument you would imagine to be played so that you can control your fingers and have different timbres and have different style. So right at the very beginning on the first theme, I want to mention the difference between how classical musicians might try to play versus what I found it to be closer to the jazz musicians play. So this would be the classical way of playing. Less or more of that, where there is emphasis on a downbeat and clean and uh, not a lot of swing there. This is how I learned to play. away the emphasis on the downbeat and that is a very very important thing to do for the entire um, jazz music. Now the first thing, the unison, I believe was all played with horns and right after that Beethoven sonatas, which part in Beethoven sonata is played by clarinet, played by cello. You will do the same with Kapustin if you um, are striving for an authentic performance. There, he, when he has the big band, the whole band to play, then he has, he's gonna do a lot of octaves. just going wild. 
So it's all that fun that is happening. Now, there would be a big um, walking bass section. You might think about making this one swing, but it is um, historically correct to not swing this. because they can't do the legato when they are plucking the string um, um, but not too soft either because this is where you are supposed to hear all the bass still not too stringy now the big thing that I hear in a lot of people's recording is that larghetto part where it's slow and it sounds as as though it should be the piano solo and you uh, you are being improvisation like so you can do the tempo as you like that might be your thought at first but how in big bands it is to it's more of the trumpet playing the melody and the whole horn is playing the slow ballad so you wouldn't want to change the tempo as much as you do in your solo piece. So try to keep the straight tempo and maybe have a little swing moment on the top note. But everything else needs to stay in tempo. Now my favorite part is the very, very end after the And this is the bebop section. This is my favorite part because Kapusti writes in the breath Part. So if you listen to bebop playing trumpet um, sax doing really really fast, they need time to breathe in between um, certain parts. And even though as a pianist I don't need to breathe in between um, phrases, he writes in the part where a saxophone player will take breath and think about what to play next. It's all written in because it's an imitation of the big band. Um, and how you would want to play is as fast as you can without losing clarity, but not too clear because how they play it isn't going to be taka 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 ta. It's da 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 da. Lots of slurs, lots of lazier sound, like you are talking American way of talking, not in British talking, and lots of accent. So a lot of people think of that as clean. But um, it's the uh, quite opposite of that. It's actually to make it sound more authentic. And what the one technique I used that I found really effective is to practice using voice. So the very beginning, instead of practicing and trying to figure out what to do, I practice to try to find the way that the piano can sound and mimic the voice because voice is what started the whole jazz thing it's a blues now without going without further ado i will perform the entire thing of the variations and i hope you can hear all the different voices in different sections and enjoy the piece 